Hello, I am Tony de Bach. I paddle the Sea of Cortés in long, self-sustained kayak expeditions. In this channel, I will share with you the incredible stories and wildlife encounters I've had over the years, as well as the tips that could help you create your own adventures on this living sea. Back in 2011, I was stuck on a beach on Isla Carmen, close to Loreto, because of a powerful Norte windstorm. I had just started my first long kayak expedition on the Sea of Cortés, and after three days eating sand, I was really looking forward to get back in the water. Finally, the winds calmed down, and I was on my way again, when I noticed something scurrying under the surface. Without any warning, dozens of large rays started jumping all around me. They would leap six feet clear out of the water, sometimes two or three at a time, and then they would land not so graciously with a loud and painful belly splash. I had never seen anything like that and I found it fascinating. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Tony and I really like to kayak in the Sea of Cortez. Today, in this first episode of Stories of a Living Sea, I will show you how I managed to capture, from my kayak, the spectacular jumps of this race, called Mobulas. When I got home after my expedition, I started investigating them. I learned that Mobulas are very similar to manta rays. In fact, they belong to the same family. But they are a bit smaller. If you look close, their heads are quite different. Mobula heads are proportionally smaller as well and their mouths are located under their body, not frontally, as in mantas. They also have two horn-like features in their heads. Those are fins that they can unfold to help them gather food. Mantas have them too, but they seldom kept them folded, so they look more like blades. It is due to these horn-like fins that mobulas are also known as devil rays, but they do not look devilish at all to me, rather the contrary. All Mobulas Armantas are harmless. They have almost no teeth, and they are very social and curious beings. They are basically flattened sharks, with skeletons made of cartilage. They may be as intelligent as some mammals, and they deliver just one fully formed large baby every few years. So it is a fish that is born and behaves like a mammal, and wants to fly like a bird. No wonder I find them fascinating. There are just eight species of mobulas in the world, and luckily four can be found in the Sea of Cortés, too large and too small. The two smaller ones are the most enthusiastic jumpers. The locals call them tortillas, and they like to travel in groups. The most obvious question, why they jump, is still a mystery. There are a lot of theories, like getting rid of parasites or uh, mating rituals, perhaps communication, but we know so little about these creatures that pretty much everything about them is still a mystery. Maybe the better question they ask themselves is, what is this monkey doing in the water? <laughs> if you want to learn more about Mobulas, I really recommend this book, Guide to Mantas and the Devil Rays of the World. It contains a lot of fun facts and curiosities about this species. I place a link to it in the comment section below. All this research made me really want to come back to the Sea of Cortés, to meet them once more. The Sea of Cortés is a really cool place. It sits in between the Baja California Peninsula and the mainland of Mexico, with a wide open gate to the Pacific. It's 700 miles long, around 80 to 100 miles wide, and really deep, up to 10,000 feet deep. The winds and currents here can be really strong, and this creates favorable conditions for plankton blooms, which attracts creatures big and small that can come in through the Pacific Gate. This creates a really unique environment where marine life thrives. It is the place Cousteau called the Aquarium of the World, and he wasn't kidding. That's why I love paddling here. My curiosity was burning, and I was really looking forward to meet these animals again. I decided to organize another expedition, the most ambitious one I have ever done. I would reach the farthest islands in search of the jumps of the Mobulas. 
Preparing for such an expedition, this one was going to be 50 days and about a thousand miles long, is not as simple as packing the kayak and going. Every day I paddle around 20 miles and then I camp at the beach at night. Sometimes I follow the coast, sometimes I get a few miles out. And getting to the islands requires open sea crossings up to 15 miles long. I needed to plan for the usual basic needs – water, food, shelter, energy, communication – but in order to reach the most remote places, I will need to go two to three weeks without resupplies. Food is not a problem. The sea is very generous. And I can pack enough rations to supplement the fishing. Energy is plentiful too. Solar panels provide me with enough electricity to run all my cameras and gear. But fresh water is a serious problem in Baja. It is a desert after all. This is the amount of water I drink in three weeks. There is no way I can pack it in my kayak. I carried desalinators in the past, but I found them cumbersome to use. After a full day of paddling, with my arms tired, the last thing I wanted to do was sit and pump for an hour or two. That's why I modified it to be able to use it with my feet. I just needed to kick rhythmically as I paddle. It took a bit of getting used to, but I would get to camp every day with a full freshwater bag. The weather in Baja can go from total calm to crazy windstorms. in less than a few hours. That's why it's very useful to carry some form of communication to receive weather reports. In Baja, this means satellite communications, since there is no cell phone coverage in the coast almost anywhere. Luckily, there are quite small units that allow you to send and receive text messages. With the essentials covered, I needed to plan now on how I was going to record my wildlife encounters, especially the mobula jumps. I equipped myself with some GoPro cameras for underwater takes and DSLR cameras capable of capturing high definition video. I carry two cameras, one is set for landscapes and the other one for wildlife. I quickly learned that shooting video requires much more gear than shooting photos. Not only the cameras, but all the stuff around them. Microphones, audio recorders, more batteries, and a computer and hard drives, because video files are huge. Every day I was filling all my memory cards. Altogether, the year I carry on my kayak, including clothes, tent, and cooking kit, amounts to around 200 pounds, but I can happily travel for four weeks without resupply, completely self-sufficient. I investigated about mobula migrations in order to get a better chance of finding them. According to some articles, there is a seasonal migration around the southern tip of the Baja Peninsula, following its full sources. But the dates were not 100% clear, and they changed per species. What I knew is that I met a lot of mobulas in May, near Loreto. So I would leave from La Paz in April 15, going north all the way to Ángel de la Guarda Island. That way, hopefully, I would intercept them along the way. Finally, with all the preparations completed, I jumped on my car and drove down to La Paz. Pretty soon after launching, I started finding jumping mobulas, which was great. You may think that it would be hard to see them on a kayak, so low to the water, compared to being on a tall boat. But in fact, kayaks have a big advantage. Kayaks are silent. I mainly use my ears, not my eyes, to find them. With no motor or mechanical noises, on a calm day, I can hear very well every detail around me. Once I hear a mobula jump, I point my bow towards it and paddle close enough to photograph it. Luckily, mobulas don't seem to be in a hurry to go anywhere when they are jumping. Actually, because you are so low in the water, you are looking up to the mobulas when they jump. This results in much more interesting pictures than shooting down at the mobulas from a tall boat. 
It's similar to when you take a picture of a singer in a stage. Photos look better from below than from above. But by far, my favorite reason for using the kayak is that I don't think you can get any closer to the water in any other boat. You almost feel part of the sea. You are connected and can sense every movement it makes. And when you have an encounter with one of the many intelligent creatures here, you feel a sense of kinship that it is hard to describe. You are both travelers on the same environment, just on different sides of the surface. The shape of the kayak must look familiar to them. It feels like they are observing you with as much curiosity and wonder as you are observing them. Just be respectful and let them approach you on their own will and you will enjoy the encounter much more. And try also to remain on top of the food chain if you can. The expedition was going very well. I had many amazing wildlife encounters and unforgettable experiences. Except for one thing, I was completely, utterly unable to capture this in video of a mobula jumping. I wanted to capture the perfect jump, a detailed close-up of a mobula jumping. The DSLR cameras I got were great for pictures and I got some good ones. But for video, it's a different story. The only way to see what you record on a DSLR is through the rear screen. And with the Baja Sun, I could see nothing. This made pointing and focusing precisely the camera very difficult, especially considering that mobula jumps are quite unpredictable. They seem to pop out of the water as popcorn. Also, the waves rock my kayak in all directions. When I zoom, it's very hard to keep the camera still. Taking a picture is not as difficult because you only need one instant right. But for video, the whole jump from beginning to end must be captured perfectly. So the best videos I managed to capture after weeks were these. Not at all what I was looking for. But not all was lost. A day earlier, when trying to record some jumps, I looked under the kayak and I saw some movement. I lowered the GoPro and recorded everything I could. After reviewing the footage, I was shocked. There were thousands of mobulas just below me. I had been focusing on the jumping mobulas, but I realized then that all that time I had a whole mega school of them just a few feet under me. It was hair racing. When I got home, I took all my footage and edited a video called Paddling in a Living Sea. After posting it on my YouTube channel, I had many comments from people that did not know that Race could do that. I felt pretty happy to be able to share something like this. But I still wanted to capture the perfect mobula jump. I knew I could do much better than that. Two years later, I was ready for a rematch. I used all my learnings to refine my strategy. Instead of the SLRs, I got two mirrorless cameras that allow you to see what you record through the optical viewfinder. No more problems with the sun. I also improved my desalinator. I converted a smaller model to be used with an electrical motor and solar panels, way easier than the human power one. One of the best items I brought on the past expedition was a nine feet long pole to use with my GoPro cameras. The pole is great because the mobulas do not seem to mind it and you can get much closer underwater shots. I also use the pole as a mast and I got some pretty cool shots with it that look straight out from a drone. This time I was planning to use a longer pole, a whooping 15 feet one. And yes, kayaks are so stable that you can use it fully extended with a camera on top and it will not flip. Heck, I even used a 9 feet pole on top of the 15 feet one and it would not flip. And finally, in later expeditions, I also took a drone so I could get a camera in the air and appreciate the mobula bangs from up top. It's amazing to think that all this gear runs simply with the Baja Sun. For the 2015 expedition, I set the launch date on May, leaving from La Paz, going again north. Doing something like this is not easy. I faced many obstacles. My kayak keel worn down so much that I got a hole in the hull and I almost sank. I had long days of paddling without seeing any animals. 
The Blanca Hurricane Chase Me. Bis. No seums beat me raw till I wanted to turn my skin away. Creepy crawlies. Scorpions. Spiders. Snakes. And stingrays. Things broke down. The heat. Windstorms. Sandstorms. And big, big waves. Big seas. Some days I would ask myself, why did I set myself up for so much trouble? All the sleepless nights, the risks, the hard work preparing for it. Ah, but then, the sunsets. The nights. The landscapes. The encounters. And finally, I did it. I was able to find and shoot many jumping mamonas. Frontal jumps and slow motion. The new camera combination worked great, and finally I was able to record the jumps with much more detail. The feeling of being all alone in the middle of nowhere and suddenly experience an encounter with these beings, creature to creature, is beyond words, and worth all the effort to get there. I realized that a single individual would jump multiple times, and I used that to my advantage. After seeing the first jump, I would get my camera ready, aim and focus on the second jump, and shoot at the third one. I was getting pretty good at estimating where the ray was going to pop out of the water in the following jump, and this helped me to get much better shots. I also got better underwater clips, but I learned the hard way that the movement I saw under the kayak is not always what it seems. Finally, I was pretty happy with the jumping videos I got. With each new encounter, I was getting more and more familiar with the mobulas and I got better and better recordings. When I thought I had seen it all, after reaching the island Angel de la Guarda in Baja Norte, I was startled by a large splash, like a whale's tail hit in the water, but I couldn't find signs of whales anywhere. After several days listening to that, I finally saw who was responsible. Huge mobulas! different than the ones I knew. They traveled alone and jumped explosively, but only once. I could only capture this jump on video. What it is significant about these mobulas is the way I saw them feed. Mobulas eat tiny crustaceans, commonly named krill, and so far I had known them to do that underwater. But these mobulas did something totally different. They launched themselves towards the surface at high speed so fast that for an instant they propel their bodies out of the water. But because of hydrodynamics, the water still flows over their backs. It even creates a very spectacular rooster crest water splash. This quick motion allows them to literally shave the top layer of water, gathering the krill sitting closest to the surface into their large mouths. If you look close, you can see the krill jumping out and trying to escape. This is the great thing of being out there so much time there is always the chance to see something that you have never seen before. Baja will never stop surprising me. 
Now I know what I want to do in my future expeditions. I will investigate these giant mobulas. When I came back to civilization, I edited my best takes and published the video Angels of a Living Sea. You can find it in my YouTube channel and click in here. This work completes a story that began eight years ago in a beach near Loreto. I hope you like it. Well, if you like this content and want to see more in the future, please subscribe and I hope to see you soon in another episode of Stories of a Living Sea.